tell you a genuine story. Your next act is so funny. I actually had a conversation with somebody I do projects with about whether the next act is too funny or not. <laughs> right? And the problem is, I can't say which side of that argument I was on. Because either I was on the side of the argument where it's like, well, she shouldn't do a thing. She's too funny and that's bad. Or I'm on the side of the argument where I'm implying she could be funnier. <laughs> So I'm not going to say which side of the argument I was on, but you have to decide for yourselves. Is she amazingly funny or just too amazingly funny? Would you please welcome the stage, Karis Bradley! I know that Steve thinks he's helping when he introduces me like that, but I just, it really doesn't. <laughs> If everyone could just collectively take a few seconds, lower your expectations, and then we'll get started. <laughs> See? <laughs> um, okay, so today I'm going to be talking about civil attacks. Uh, this was my area of research. Um, it's an application of complex networks. That's the study of graphs. Um, I'm going to be talking about that area of sort of maths and how it briefly intersects with 1970s psychiatry. Um, I've written one joke, and this is it. What does complex networks and 1970s psychiatry have in common? Uh, they are both quite unethical and very unscientific. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I have to say, this set, it doesn't really go anywhere, it doesn't have an ending, um, which is an excellent metaphor for my research, but luckily for you guys, <laughs> this set is only nine, uh, nine minutes long as opposed to the 11 months that I have spent hurtling into a dead end um, <laughs> since my PhD started. Um, so let's get cracking. What, what is a civil attack? Um, so a civil attack is any attack on an online system um, that involves one person controlling multiple accounts on that system. And that can be a small scale thing. So that can be you, I don't know, creating a fake Reddit account so that you can just upvote all of the things that you've posted so that they're not right at the very, very bottom. <laughs> just hypothetically, that's you guys, not me. Obviously. <laughs> or they can be large scale, like my favorite ever civil attack, which happened in the 2011 Russian ele uh, elections. So after the elections, um, a lot of people took to Twitter to, to protest and to say how angry they were, how they thought everything was fixed. Um, and they were coordinating their protests via Twitter. Um, and then a couple of people controlling about 10,000 Twitter accounts via some computers um, just started hijacking the, the, the hashtags. And they were posting a lot of pro-Putin propaganda, but they were also posting just a lot of like scam links and nonsense. But it meant that, because they were all using the same hashtags, if you wanted to use those hashtags legitimately, you just had a wall of noise and you couldn't connect with anyone. Um, so not funny, but effective. So that's, that's what a civil attack is. Where would you see civil attacks? So the most common ones we see on social media, if you've ever seen a fake Ray-Ban advert, that probably will have been part of a civil attack. We also get them on online marketplaces like eBay. They're really good for boosting your reputation, making it easier for you to scam people, um, and, and other things like that. Um, but you have to be on the internet, pretty much. Um, <laughs> Why would you carry out a civil attack? Why would you go to the effort of creating tens of thousands of fake Facebook accounts just so that you can, you can hawk a couple of cheap Ray-Bans? Well, there's actually... 95% of my research for this talk was deciding which sloth I wanted to put on that slide. Um, so, civil attacks... Can, can actually, uh, they, they can be incredibly financially effective. Um, we are talking like uh, the, the billion dollar scam industry that exists online. Um, and what you want when you're trying to scam people is to have as low costs as possible, um, but to reach as, as many people as possible. And what's qu quite interesting about scams um, is that you're, you're trying to find the three or four people that are extremely gullible in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who receive your, your phishing email or receive um, your, your fake Ray-Ban advert. And if you've ever looked at a scam and been like, well, they've spelled loads of things wrong, it's really obvious um, that this is fake, that is intentional. They're trying to find the people who don't even care about those kind of spelling mistakes. Um, but you can only do that if you can reach as many people as possible, um, and you don't want that to cost a lot of money. Um, so civil attacks are, are really, really useful for that. So how do civil attacks work? Isn't it the case that we have things like captures, you have to sign up with a mobile phone number now on lots of accounts, all of these things should be preventing the automated process of creating hundreds of thousands of accounts. Well, one thing that I love about the cybercrime sort of 
industry is that it is, is very much like Harold Friedman's wet dream, because um, it's the one place on earth where the market truly solves. Um, and you can, you can, I thought I was going to get a bigger laugh, apparently, this, <laughs> apparently economists don't come to science shows. I wonder why. Um, oh, saved it. <laughs> I am just too funny. <laughs> So, um, so the, yeah, there's this entire industry which has been created to help you carry out civil attacks. Um, and you can go online and you can buy a thousand Facebook accounts for anywhere between $14 and $600. And when you're buying, you can specify things like what, um, what age the profile pictures should be, um, how good the profile pictures should be, so that if you just Googled stock photo, that wouldn't come up with all the images that have been used for your profile picture, where the, uh, the country that the person is claiming to be from. Um, you can write scripts that will automatically generate content and just chuck it out of the, the profile page um, which does tend to make all of the Facebook pictures uh, f Facebook profiles um, very reminiscent of my Bebo page when I was a teenager <laughs> and also ironically my mum's Facebook page now <laughs> um, but what it means is that we get very very realistic looking people that cannot be distinguished by co computers um, so civil attacks are really really difficult to identify um, and this is what I spent a lot of time uh, looking at over the last 11 months. Um, and what happened was within computer science, people started saying, well, we can't identify them just by looking at them or trying to, to, to identify like leaks within their profiles or, or whatever. What if we looked at the structure, the complex structure of the network itself? Could we identify them that way? And the theory was that fake accounts, they probably connect with fake accounts. Um, and real accounts, they probably connect with real accounts. And, and those two groups probably don't mix. That seems like a reasonable assumption, right? Um, so... It turns out that if you make that assumption, you can actually design quite good tools to try and identify symbols. Problem, none of you guys care who adds you on Facebook. You just accept every single request that you get, which means that assumption is not true. And like seven years of computer science research, just down the drain. So I arrive as a fresh-faced, excited PhD student, knowing all of that, being like, it's cool, I'm going to find a completely different approach. It's going to be great. Guess how much work I have done to improve the field um, of, of, of readdressing civil attacks in the 11 months that I've been a PhD student? Fuck all. Um, <laughs> but enough about me. I now want to talk about a researcher who didn't only do nothing for her field, but also like, genuinely did some bad stuff as well. <laughs> so who is Sybil? Like, why are these attacks called Sybil? So this is not called, uh, this person is not called Sybil. Her name is actually Shirley Mason. Um, and she was an artist and she was a teacher, but she was also the subject of a 1973 book called Sybil. And that book was huge. Like, it sold millions of copies. Um, it became a television series that literally one fifth of the American population sat down to watch when it came out. It was huge. Um, and it told the story of this woman, uh, Shirley Mason, a.k.a. Sybil Dorset, a.k.a. Peggy, a.k.a. Vicky, um, who was one of the first documented cases of multiple personality disorder. Do you guys get it? Multiple personality disorder. Carrying out a Sybil attack, that's like having multiple personalities. <laughs> Computer scientists, aren't they hilarious? <laughs> um, so... And if you felt uncomfortable laughing at that joke, it's, it's really okay, because multi -persona multiple personality disorder it actually doesn't exist, so you're not laughing at a legitimate illness. Because um, <laughs> whilst this woman claimed to have, um, or thought that she had 16 different personalities, she didn't. So why would she then make up all of these different personalities to say that she had them? That is because of this woman. This is her psychiatrist um, from the time. Uh, we don't like her. Her name is Dr. Wilbur. And what she did was she gave her patient a fuck ton of sodium pentothal, um, now, sodium pentothal is known as truth serum, which is ironic because it's now known to create false memories. <laughs> so she would give her patient a load of drugs and then talk to her and help her conjure these really horrible stories of abuse um, and trauma from her childhood. And then from those, that led on to um, her creating these, these stories of different personalities that she thought she had. The other thing about sodium pentothal is it, inc it is incredibly addictive. Um, so when her patient became less interesting, she would give her less of the drug um, until Shirley Mason came up with more interesting stories for her to write about, and then she would be rewarded with those drugs. Um, and then what we got uh, was evidence of multiple personality disorder, which did not exist. Um, but they were able to sort of propagate this myth that it did, and it was really interesting, and you should continue treating your patients uh, in the way that she did for years and years and years. And I don't have to come up with an ending, because it's now... Uh, <laughs> it says stop, so I just leave. Uh, but those, those are all the terrible things about civil tax. Thank you very much.